as we've discussed, we know who's at risk, patients with chronic liver disease. We think screening can make a difference by finding the disease early. So we find the disease early. Why is that good? I, I, I know the goal is to cure the disease. And, and one of the main ways of doing that is probably liver transplant. Uh, Amit, can you give us some background about who's the best candidate for a liver transplant and how we assess that? Yeah, so, you know, taking a look at liver transplant just historically, um, when we first started, the outcomes with liver transplant and HEC were, were bad. And so there was actually a push, whether we, or there was a question, if we should even perform liver transplantation for HCC. And then, you know, as Jordi had said, Mazafero came up with the criteria, currently known as the Milan criteria, in terms of defining a subset of patients who actually had very good outcomes um, after transplant with low rates of recurrence. And so when you apply these, these criteria called the Milan criteria, so that is one tumor less than five centimeters or two to three tumors less than three centimeters each, no vascular invasion, no extrahepatic disease, you actually have a low risk of recurrence around 10%. Um, now, when you have something good, there's always a stretch in medicine to say, can we push the boundaries even further? And so now there have been several expanded criteria which have been proposed. Probably the most famous are the UCSF criteria, which have said we can do slightly larger tumors. Um, I live in Texas, and Texas also has their own expanded criteria. I always say that everything's bigger in Texas, yeah. <laughs> and so we have also um, have bigger criteria. And I think when you look at the data, the data suggest that this you can have pretty good outcomes. They're not as good as Milan, but the, the recurrence rates aren't awful. Now, you know, while this may benefit that individual patient, I think we also have to consider the greater good. And so we have a limited amount of organs available. And so when you take an organ and you give it to somebody with quote unquote expanded criteria, you're in essence also taking an organ away from that patient who has a meld of 36 in the ICU. And no cancer. And no cancer. And so we've seen in the United States an increasing proportion of the list, quote unquote, eaten up by patients with HCC. And so I think we really have to think about what we're doing in terms of trying to push these criteria. But there have been several criteria, once again, that have been proposed. Um, and the outcomes are reasonable. I think one of the more recent ones that have been proposed are the Toronto criteria. Um, and the Toronto criteria use um, an elevated, uh, they, they take a look at the alpha feta protein, they take a look at symptoms, and then they take a look at the actual histology. Um, these criteria were proposed, um, and they've just recent been, recently been validated in terms of selecting patients that are outside of Milan um, that can have a good um, outcome. Um, and low risk of recurrence. Um, in my opinion, these criteria have limited utility in clinical practice because you need histologic data. And most patients on the transplant list aren't getting a biopsy to have that histologic data available prior to transplant. All right, you had a comment? Yeah, so may maybe just a brief comment. So, I'm, so in, in HTC, it's always a little bit more difficult. And I think there's also some points um, we need to consider. So in some countries, for example, um, if a patient is at some point out of Milan, um, he will never be a candidate for liver transplantation. So in Germany, once you are out of Milan, um, even if you um, have a good uh, a local treatment and your tumor is then within Milan, you would not be able to get a liver transplantation. So, and this is basically the case in some countries. I'm not sure whether this is good. I mean, um, because we have seen that patients that can be um, successfully downstaged, they can also be good candidates for liver transplantation. So, I think we have to rethink about it. And then it's also again the question about the underlying liver disease, because in several countries, patients with um, liver cirrhosis due to alcohol abuse. I will not get a liver transplantation. Yeah, so if you um, have an overuse of alcohol and um, your HCC and your cirrhosis is, is, is caused by um, alcohol, and even if you have a tumor within Milan, um, you would not be a candidate for liver transplantation. And I mean, even candidates. after abstinence? I mean, in Germany, we require six months of abstinence, like in the United which, States. Which, which makes it a little bit difficult sometimes. I mean, you have the tumor, you have the liver cirrhosis, um, you need to apply in treatment which might harm the, uh, the liver, which makes it more difficult. And we have a time on the waiting list. So it's not only that you need to have six months without alcohol, then you have your time on the waiting sure. list, which can be up to one or two years. Sure. I think Art brings up a, 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 a good point, actually. So, um, you know, really the Milan criteria were defined as a surrogate for tumor biology. Uh, 
um, but it's an imperfect surrogate for tumor biology. And I think that really what we can see as you follow people on the list is you can actually select patients who have good tumor biology and bad tumor biology. I would argue somebody who's outside of Milan criteria, who get treated with local regional therapy, who have a decrease in tumor burden, who are able to stay within criteria then for six months or nine months or whatever it is, that patient actually has shown that they have a very good tumor biology. Mm -hmm. um, alternatively, somebody who has a very small tumor, two centimeters, who we treat with local regional therapy as bridging therapy while they're waiting on the transplant list, whose tumor continues to grow, but is fortunate enough to stay within Milan criteria, actually has a bad tumor biology. And that patient probably has a higher risk of recurrence. And so I think we really have to rethink the way that we define criteria. And so actually in the United States now, all patients with HCC have to wait on the list at least six months. And really the idea here is to get a sense of tumor biology, what, what the tumors are doing while they're on the list. So I think that we're gonna see, I mean, I think, over time, we're going to see a shift away from a static one-time measurement to really how the tumor changes over time in terms of defining the best candidates for transplant. So without a doubt, a moving target. And I think a uh, take-home message would be that given its moving criteria and even regional, patients deserve to be assessed at a transplant center Agreed. Uh, because those rules are, are changing so rapidly. Now, a patient... I would say that they should be assessed in a place that they have access to all the options, not a transplant center only, because there are transplant centers that do not have the other options. So what needs to be defined is all the options that are effective should be available. 